So under this plan, pharmacists would be able to treat ear infections, wounds, nausea, gastro, acne and muscle and joint pain, and that would kick in from 2026. Is there anything on that list that you would be comfortable with pharmacists seeing to instead of a doctor? So dispensing a medicine or prescribing a medicine is often the, the easy part and people uh, present with symptoms that don't present with a diagnosis. So nausea could actually be a heart attack or it could be a cancer. There are lots of uh, ear infections, for example. Uh, it, most ear infections we don't treat with antibiotics. So our concern is more around that, you know, at a time when we're trying to reduce the amount of antibiotics in the world as one of the biggest health threats, we're actually going to be increasing the prescribing uh, and the use of those types of medicines. We have already seen this happen in some areas. Pharmacists are now able to give prescriptions to women with urinary tract infections. How do you feel about that? Are you aware of any potential negative outcomes from that move? Yeah, so I'm, I'm where, live where the original pilot was. And what we've found is that, you know, UTIs, uh, 50% of the time they're not. It could be that they could be a cancer or it could be a sexually transmitted infection. And we're finding that uh, we're getting antibiotics prescribed. And as I said before, antibiotic use is one of the biggest threats to our global public health, and we should be restricting them and not increasing them. Now, of course, the aim of the plan is to ease pressure on GPs and hospitals. Do you believe that it will have that effect? So trying to explode that myth a little bit with uh, GPs, what we've seen in the UK is it's actually increased uh, delayed presentations and misdiagnosis. So we need to make sure that people do what they're best at doing and what they're trained for. And, you know, this has been done to address access. We, we, we know that, that Maccas is easy access, but it's not necessarily healthy for you. So it's a bit of a false economy and we need to make sure that we invest in the system from the bottom up, not just keep, you know, shifting the, the deck chairs around. Yeah, so just to go into that more, what changes do you think that we need to see to address these pressures on GPs and, and hospitals? So with respect to access, the, the ABS data actually says that four out of five people can get into their GP within, within that first 24 hours if they need to. And uh, we need to make sure that we invest in the foundations of the healthcare system, and that is general practice and primary care. And we know that the funding in that has been dropping and more has been going into hospitals. So that's our call to the government, invest more in general practice and primary care, keep people well and keep people out of hospital. And I guess, what's your message to, to patients, to people who might be thinking of going to see a pharmacist to get treated uh, for one of these conditions when this comes into effect? Look, nine out of 10 people see their, their GP every year. If you've got something that you're concerned about, you know, touch base with, with your practice and your GP and, and keep seeing your pharmacist for your medicines. That, that's what we're trained for and we work very, very closely together. However, we can't uh, start fragmenting care and, and splitting the system off. We need to make sure that we have continuity and we work together. Thank you very much for joining me. That's Dr Nicole Higgins, who is President of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners.